Verbs are generally expressed through a tense, like past simple or present perfect continuous. In fact, there are 12 standard tenses in English, as well as verb structures for habit or for the unreal mood. But why do we need so many? And what exactly is tense? Tense is used to convey when a verb takes place, but it's not as simple or direct as it seems at first glance. It doesn't so much matter when the verb occurs relative to now, but instead when the context occurs relative to now, and when the verb occurs relative to the context. These are the two primary components of tense, time reference and aspect. Since tense hinges around context, let's address what context means. It's the topic of discourse, or the situation that the speaker is speaking about. Context may last a single moment, a lifetime, or any other time span. Context is often a particular time frame, but time reference is when the context occurs relative to now, and we essentially have only three options for time reference. Past, present, or future. We use past when the context is set before now, and future when the context is set after now. The specific time or duration in which the context is set doesn't matter when setting the time reference. Whether the context is yesterday at noon, or when I was young, or the 18th century, the time reference is simply past. The same is true of future tenses. Present applies when the time reference is or includes now. It may be this very moment, or it may be something broader like this year. We also use present for situations that are generally or always the case, as far as the speaker is concerned anyway. So time reference expresses whether the context occurs in the past, present, or future, but notice that we haven't really addressed yet when the verbs take place. Verbs might occur sometime within the context, or span the entire length of the context, or even occur outside the context, either in part or in full. This is where aspects come in. We'll cover the different aspects and their details in a part two video, but for now, it's important simply to acknowledge that the timing of the verb and the timing of the context do not always align. This is commonly illustrated through the present perfect tense, which usually references verbs that started and maybe even finished in the past. Did you catch that? The verbs are in the past, and yet the tense is present. This can seem a little mind-boggling at first, but remember that it's not the timing of the verb that determines the time reference, but the context. The context is now, so the tense is present. You may be wondering, if we have a present context, then why would we talk about something in the past? Well, the verb, regardless of when it takes place, is relevant to the context somehow. Here, a verb that started in the past might continue into the present. Or, if the verb has already finished, perhaps it has some lasting effect that influences the present situation. So, the point is not the occurrence of the verb itself, but rather why the verb matters to the context. For instance, in the sentence, the handyman has repaired the dishwasher, the speaker is probably not concerned with how the handyman went about his repairs in the past. Instead, the point of the sentence is that the dishwasher is working again in the present. Here's another example. Suppose on Monday, Emma was planning for an event to take place on Friday. If today is Wednesday of that same week, then which time reference do we use? Monday is in the past, but Friday is in the future. The answer, of course, depends on the context. If the topic of conversation is Emma's planning session, then the context is Monday, and therefore we should use a past tense. To account for the event that comes later, we'd probably use a particular tense called future in the past, which is not one of the standard 12 tenses, but it is still a framework that we use from time to time. In this case, we're not really talking about the event itself, but about the plans for the event, like how Emma arranged the schedule or possible complications she worried about. If, on the other hand, the context is set around Friday's event, then we should use a future tense. This time we're not talking about Emma's planning process, but about how the upcoming event will be affected by her plans. Maybe we suspect that the event will go very smoothly because of all the planning that Emma did. The reality of the overall situation is the same either way. All that really changes is the perspective of the speaker and what topic they choose to focus on. And that's a large part of how tense works. As much as it seems like it should be a concrete concept, it's actually fairly relative and subjective. In summary, we naturally frame situations in a context. 
The timing of that context then determines whether the tense is past, present, or future, regardless of when relevant verbs take place. But a big question remains, how do we account for the timing of verbs when they don't match up with the context? This is communicated through aspect, and we will cover that in the next video.